Uh, this video is just a short uh, introduction to Mark's Gospel. Uh, I'm recording this video after I've recorded uh, the videos on Matthew's Gospel, which is a bit strange really because Mark was written um, very most likely uh, before uh, Matthew. And it seems that Matthew and Luke uh, kind of built on uh, Mark's gospel uh, to give their uh, expanded uh, gospel. So it's the earliest gospel that we have. And um, there's lots of things we could say about Mark, but I thought the place to start would be at the end. Um, you know, the, the, the gospel ends uh, with a, an account of the resurrection, although we, we don't actually get Jesus, um, you know, the risen Jesus appearing. Uh, we get an angel uh, telling the women who had who uh, came to the tomb, um, he's risen, he's not here. So it does affirm that Jesus is uh, is raised. Uh, and uh, the angel even points to the place where they laid him um, and then tells them to go uh, to tell uh, the disciples. And uh, But the, the, the last uh, verse, verse 8, they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had seized them and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Now that's the, the place that... Um, most scholars think that Mark's gospel ended. The earliest manuscripts we have end there. But in your Bible, there'll be uh, kind of more text after that. And I, I think, I mean, uh, others might have a different view, but I, I think uh, the reason that we have these kind of longer endings is people sort of said, that's it. That's how it ends. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very sort of um, anticlimactic ending. Um, you know, the, these women said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. And that's the end of the gospel. But I think we understand the ending by considering the beginning. And uh, right at the beginning of the gospel, now the, the idea of this being the gospel according to Mark, I think it is the gospel according to Mark, but that's not actually part of the text. That was sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a kind of attributed to the, to, the, uh, to the gospel, but it's not actually part of the manuscript. The very beginning of the gospel though, uh, it says, uh, chapter 1, verse 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, what, what does that mean? The be what, why, why would you start? You know, it would be like starting a, a novel, the beginning of the novel. Uh, that, that's how we can sometimes think of it. But actually, what, what Mark means when he says the beginning of the gospel, the gospel here is not, he doesn't mean this is the beginning, this is the start point of my, my gospel of Mark. No, it's the beginning of the gospel uh, at this point, the, as, as an early Christian reader, you, you would, if you're reading this, you're thinking of the gospel as the proclaimed gospel. You've, uh, you've heard the gospel preached by apostles or preached by, by others. Uh, you've come to believe in Jesus through the preaching of the gospel. And what Mark is saying is, okay, this is the beginning of the gospel. This is how the gospel that you've heard preached began. You, you can kind of think of it like the... Um, you know, the origin story, the, the, the backstory to the gospel, kind of like, and I stress kind of uh, like the magician's nephew to uh, the lion, the witch in the world. This is the, this is the backstory. Uh, you know, think of uh, 1 Corinthians 15 when Paul gives his summary of, of the gospel, you know, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. It's quite a sort of, um, uh, it, it's quite a sort of stripped out basic summary in terms of uh, details about Jesus' life. And you can read Paul's letters and there's very little um, detail about uh, Jesus' uh, life and teaching. And so kind of sometimes we, we think uh, because the Gospels deal with Jesus' life, they were written before the, the uh, letters, but actually it's the other way around. The letters were written first and then the Gospels were written. So uh, the letters sort of, obviously um, you know assume a knowledge of Jesus on the part of the people that are that are writing but what the gospels do is they come along and say okay you've got this assumed knowledge you do know about Jesus you know some of the basics of his life you know that he died that he rose again but we're going to fill out for you um, by talking to eyewitnesses and investigating we're going to fill out for you uh, what actually um, you know happened in the life of Jesus and that that I think is what's uh, what's happening the beginning of the gospel here's the um, here's the beginning of the gospel because it, it, it begins in the life of Jesus. And so I think that's why, you know, Mark ends so suddenly. It's because he's, he's writing to people who know what happens next. Uh, they know that um, the, the women did go to uh, the other disciples. They know that um, the, uh, the gospel was preached because they're, they're downstream of it. So I, I think that's one way to think of, of um, um, Mark's gospel. It's the, it's the backstory to 
uh, the gospel. It gives us the the, the detail of uh, of Jesus' life and uh, and it lays it down. Um, it's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now it's slightly artificial, but you can sort of think of um, you know Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Um, in terms of the two halves of the gospel, because at the end of, um, or the middle of chapter eight, um, Peter, uh, chapter eight, verse uh, 29, Peter um, confesses to Jesus that you are the Christ. He recognizes that he is the Christ. And then um, uh, after Jesus, uh, his death on uh, the cross, uh, there's a centurion uh, watching and um uh, the this, this centurion, as he sees Jesus, uh, says, uh, truly, this was the son of God. So the, the, the gospel kind of focuses on uh, Jesus, the Christ, the son of God. Uh, both, I think, are, are you know, his, his kingship. Christ was a, a Jewish term. Son of God was also a Jewish term, but it also had uh, implications for uh, the Romans that it, 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 it um uh, it spoke of a kind of divine figure, and it's it's kind of interesting that it's a Roman centurion who confesses Jesus as as the Son of God. But also, in terms of thinking of the um, of the gospel, the first half is really kind of concerned with establishing that identity, showing Jesus miracles. Uh, it's not just doing that, but that, that's a sort of helpful way to think of it. The, the second half. Uh, again, it's heading towards his his death and the the confession that he is the Son of God. But it is uh, much more concerned with his death. Um, once Peter confesses Jesus, Jesus is the Christ, then um, Jesus begins to instruct his disciples on the nature of his death, the importance of his death. And so uh, the focus on his death kind of increases in that second half of the gospel. And with it, uh, teaching on discipleship, uh, Jesus calling uh, his disciples to follow him and teaching what, what that looks like. So again, very simply, the first half is kind of establishing Jesus' identity. Second half is uh, heading towards his death, establishing the importance of his death and what it means to follow him. Um, so you could really, uh, this is kind of overly reductionistic, but might just help you to get a big picture. You know, the first half is establishing that Jesus is the Christ. The second half is showing that he came to die and calls people to follow him. Okay, so that's that's what's going on. Also, right at the beginning, uh, we have... Um, Verse two, as it is written, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written. And then there's a quote from um, Isaiah kind of combined with Malachi, but um, Mark sort of, as is the practice at the time, you um, you, you can combine quotes, but you, you um, kind of refer to them by the, the, the more famous prophet Isaiah. And um, here, um, the, the quote is interesting because it's a quote from Isaiah 40, um, talking about uh, the messenger coming, before the coming of the Lord, as in God, and that's applied to John the Baptist as the messenger, and Jesus is the one who comes. So it's it's God's going to come. But what it does is it it, it says if you want to understand the background of the gospel, you're going to understand the life that I'm going to um, unpack in uh, in in this book. But also you need to understand uh, the Old Testament. You can't understand Jesus unless you understand him against the backdrop of the Old Testament. But uh, Mark is different to Matthew. Matthew, we said, is, is very, and we saw, is very obvious in his appeal to the Old Testament. And there are places in Mark's gospel where he kind of uh, points directly to Old Testament precedent, but it's much more um, elusive. It's much more, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, you know, he's pointing to the Old Testament, but not necessarily drawing attention to it. Um, uh, Richard Hayes uh, is uh, in his book on the, on the Old Testament and the Gospels. Uh, he suggests that um, chapter four gives something of, a, of a, an approach to Mark's gospel when Jesus says, chapter four, verse um, 24, pay attention to what you hear with the measure you use. It will be measured to you and still more will be added to you. And he, he, he suggests that, you know, that that uh, Jesus was calling for a generous hearing of him. And Mark has put that there to sort of um, uh, underline the idea that, you know, it's, it's a generous hearing of uh, reading of his gospel in, in light of the Old Testament to fully understand um, uh, who Jesus is. So those are some of the, the um, kind of anchor points as we approach uh, the gospel. But uh, why don't I pray? Uh, Father, we thank you for Mark and his gospel. Uh, we thank you for uh, gi him giving us the beginning of the gospel and grounding our faith in the Lord Jesus. We thank you so much for it and uh, for our understanding of Jesus that it gives us. In Jesus' name. Amen.